Okay, well, I've got a new instrument for you today. This is a concert zither, and I've owned it for quite a few weeks now. I bought it on eBay, and it was an absolute wreck. All this end part here, I'll just tip this up here, where the strings feed through along here. This was all smashed to pieces, and my very clever friend, Carl Anderson, uh, who's actually made me a couple of instruments over the years, he fixed this, put a brand new piece of wood in here. You'd never know there was ever any damage to it. He stripped the whole thing down, cleaned it all up, filled up all the cracks in the fingerboard. I bought a new set of strings for it, which amazingly cost over £200 from Germany, because there are 40 of them. That's a lot of strings, isn't it? Uh, but now it's back to its optimum condition. I'm just going to show you around it. Uh, basically, like I say, you have 40 strings. You've got five strings here, which are the melody strings, and those are played by plucking them with this... Um, thing which is called a zither ring. It looks like a standard thumb pick. There's a standard thumb pick for you. But this is thinner and it's got more of an angle to it. Okay, so I use a size four or a size five. This is a four that goes on your thumb like that. And then you put your hand across the instrument. Basically, you pluck these uh, strings here and you fret them like you play a piano, so, so you've got a bit like that, I'm sure you'll recognise that, a bit of the third man, that's the only bit I can do at the moment, because as you'll see in a moment, this thing is it's so hard, it's just unbelievable, and, and you'll understand why in a moment. So that's how you play the uh, fretted uh, strings, and then these open strings here, these are the 35 strings, those are for accompanying uh, the tune. So you play the tune on this kind of fretboard here. This fretboard had loads of cracks in and Carl's filled it all in and, and uh, the pegs weren't working very well here. Now these melody strings are tuned with sort of standard uh, guitar tuners. And you've got two A's and then you've got D and then you've got G and then you've got C. And then you have these 35 accompanying strings which are split into three areas. You've got the accompaniment strings, 12 of those. You've got 12 bass strings and you've got, I think on this, you've got 11 contra bass strings. The accompaniment strings and the bass strings are tuned in fifths, if I just... As you can hear, they don't go down, they go up and down. And then these... Um, these contrabass strings are a semitone apart, dropping down. So, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. I started off by trying to learn the third man, and I soon realised that's way beyond my capability. Oh, by the way, you tune these strings with one of these things, uh, and it fits over there, and you uh, turn the, the peg. Um, it's still going out of tune. I've had the strings on here for about four weeks, I guess, and it's still drifting out a couple of cents every day, but it's not a major problem, and you don't have to tune all the strings every time you play. I've just tuned the strings that I need to show you this tune. Um, now, it's supposed to go at an angle. Uh, this is not correct, but it's the best I can do to get everything in the, in the actual shot. So, like I said, third man was completely uh, out of the question, so I've gone for lightly row. <laughs> and you might think, well, that's a really babyish thing, but believe me, this is hard, as you will see in a moment. So I'll just play the tune for you, and it's all on the C string, and you use your thumb, and you use your fingers like this. So if I just play this through for a minute. So there's a little bit of the tune there, as you can see I'm using my thumb, you use the edge of your thumb and the tips of your fingers. Some fingers are straight, some fingers are bent. Um, I've learnt what I know, by the way, from an amazing lady who lives in Australia called Ilsa Harris. Uh, I think she's in her 80s, but she's uh, just an incredibly good zither player and teacher. I bought her book online. I've had a couple of uh, emails from her. Lovely lady, if you are interested in learning one of these instruments, I suggest you make her your first stop because it can stop you making all kinds of 
uh, errors before you get going. You need to get the, the position right before you start. So that's basically how you play the tune. That's just on one string. Obviously, you know, more complex tunes will use two strings at a time, two fingers at a time. This is just very sort of uh, baby steps. Now, as far as the accompaniment goes, obviously you've got to have your zither ring on your thumb uh, ready on that string. And you, it tends to be like this. Your heel of your hand goes on this um, rest here, where the strings come in at an angle and make sure your thumb is gonna be on that string. Now, I'm gonna use this string here, which is a C, and I'm gonna use this string here, which is a G. Now, you have to set your whole right hand up before you start. Even though I'm not using fingers two and one on this tune, I'm still gonna need to set them up properly. Finger one on string five, finger two on string eight, and then the third finger is gonna be the finger that does the plucking of the two, uh, as it will be bass strings of this, C and G, and the little finger kind of leans on it. Um, let's just get this in so you can see this. There's the little finger kind of leaning on the third finger as it plucks like that and like that. So C and G. This is very babyish, but you'll get the idea as I play. So as you play these bass strings, you pluck them and you come to rest on the string behind. So there's the C resting on the string kind of behind it. And then there's the G resting on the C. See? And these two fingers are angled back and that's it. It looks incredibly awkward and it really is. It really feels completely alien. I'm a professional guitarist, so I'm used to stringed instruments, but this really is a complete nightmare just to get that set up to go. So I'll now try and play the tune through for you in a very amateurish way. Uh, normally you'd have the bass and you have these fingers working as well, but I can't do that yet. And I'm gonna try and play one of these contrabass strings, the low C right at the end. Here we go then. Okay, it wasn't great, was it? But I'll, I'll have another go at it. So to do that, I've got to get set up again. as probably as good as it's going to get for the moment. I'm still very nervous of it and I'm still struggling as you can see but that's taken me a long while to get to that point you just wouldn't believe it would you really but it is phenomenally difficult. Uh, let's just show you around this thing. I have no idea how old it is. It says Friedrich Augustus Hamig on the label inside. Instrument builder Mark Neukirchen this is tuned in Munich tuning. There's also a Vienna tuning. So you see it's got this beautiful scroll in here. And uh, I'm not sure if this is ivory or plastic. Ivory, I'm guessing here. It's kind of post here. It really is a pretty amazing work of art. Very impressive, isn't it? Beautiful thing. There's the label inside top about of it 
and the back. It's got these rather nasty spikes down here. You have to put a, a blanket down, otherwise you're gonna scratch your tabletop up. You're supposed to put it on a table in front of you. It's got a few marks on it still, but believe me, Carl has absolutely rebuilt this. It was such a mess before and he's done an incredible job on it. The idea is, by the way, that you hold it at an angle. Obviously, I'm holding the camera here, so this is kind of an angle. It's, you don't have it straight onto you. You angle it away, and you have this kind of area here pointing at your belly button. That's the, the, the plan. Uh, doesn't always work out that way. So it's quite a big thing. So at its longest point, it is uh, 27 and a half inches, and it's... Uh, Width-wise, it's about, I suppose, 15 inches uh, that way. So there we are. Those are the measurements. It doesn't weigh very much. It's not a heavy thing. It came in a really lovely case as well. If I'd have bought this instrument in this condition, it would have probably cost me the best part of about a £1,000. I paid a fraction of that because it was broken. And I'm lucky enough to uh, have a good friend who could fix it for me. So thank you very much, Carl, for doing that. In case you're wondering why some of the strings are red, all the Fs... All the A's and all the C sharps are red. It's to help you find your way around because um, there's so many strings, aren't there? And it's a really good way of uh, finding your way around quickly because it's hard to see where you are when you put your hand down. Of course, the film that made this instrument famous was The Third Man. Um, this is known as the, the Harry Lyme theme, the one we all know. Um, and of course, you can get lovely vibrato like that. And of course, the idea is you play that tune and play the accompanying strings as well. That film came out in 1949 and featured uh, the playing of Anton Karras, I think. Incredible player. If you search his name on YouTube, you'll see him playing this and it's just... It makes you cry uh, when you see me playing lightly row really terribly. But you never know. You know, given time, I might uh, eventually be able to master that, although I somehow doubt it. It's a fascinating instrument. How I ended up buying this instrument uh, was one Sunday morning, I saw a different type of zither on YouTube called a cord zither. And I bought that, and I'll show you that in a different video. Nowhere near as hard as this. And that got me interested in zithers, uh, in general, and then I came across this, the concert zither. I think this is called an alpine zither, an alpine concert zither. Uh, some of these have less strings. Um, I think there may be one that's got slightly more than this, and uh, it certainly is an amazing looking thing. It's gonna be a, a, a long while before I post another video, because as you can see, I'm really struggling just to play lightly row at the moment. Thank you very much for watching this video, and you'll see me in my next one.